And pencils down, close your test books, everybody, because we are done with the State Line Kit Bash Challenge. We're gonna take a look at our last in-house kit bashers, plus I've got a nice little stack of outside contestants, too, that will take a look at their work. So let's kick it off with Eric White. Well, Eric, William Cohen and company is open for business, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, finally got this thing done. Took me a couple of tries to get the painting done on the roof. But, okay. Um, yeah, I know Ben worked with you quite a bit on trying to get the, the well, the masked out letters on top, right? Yes, yeah, we tried uh, one form of masking material, uh, sort of a vinyl stuff. It stuck to the paint so well, it ripped it right off oh, the roof. Oh, ouch, okay. Um, then I tried some decals, uh, yeah. yellow ink on clear film means invisible letters uh, when you put it on gray color. yeah mm -hmm. so this time i put some primer down put some more primer down Let's see there's a good lesson use primer use it works primer, yes and then we used uh some uh frisket film okay and that's actually what this is designed to do and yeah it worked. and i think actually ben got some footage of you peeling the frisket film off he right? did yeah. yeah yeah it's it's one of those uh you know fascinating things you just sort of like to i know watch. it's it was cool to watch the letters oh look they appear uh, yes it's very yes. exciting okay so you've done some actually really neat things with your kit bash here you've not only doubled the size of the building and extended it by grafting two kits together but these guys right here this uh, glass block window detail right. that's awesome tell me a little bit about how you did that well thanks that's just um some evergreen styrene, uh, the tile. Yep. And I found a size that seemed about right for a four inch or six inch glass block, painted it grimy black, then clear coated it with some uh, gloss coat. Okay. And then uh, wiped some uh, aged concrete in there for mortar. And Yeah, you have to get down really close to it to realize I can't actually see through those. Because yeah. from any type of other distance, you're like, oh, it's glass block. You know exactly what it is when you see it. Yeah, I, I keep looking at it and I know what it is. So it's like, I don't know if that works or not, but I'm glad that it looks good to you. Oh, no, it's wonderful. I love it. So, no, this looks great, Eric. Any uh, last words of advice? Well, yeah, primer. Primer, yes, primer is good. Um, I had some fun with the, uh, the chipping medium getting this. Yep. Uh, well, and it's because of your experiments with the, the chipping the medium. I used that on that stock car project for the Olympia, and that was that's great stuff. I love it. Yeah, it's fun. It, it, it really gives a, a nice effect. Mm -hmm. um, and a little bit more research, I can fill up the inside. It's all empty now. So oh, don't tell well, anybody. It's okay. Ready for occupancy. Yes. Yeah, we'll yes. build to suit. Right. Yes, it's, it's broom clean. All right. I love it, especially the roof. This was so worth the effort you put into it. it yeah, that great. Was, that's what really stood out in the photo that I found. So. All right. Bravo, Eric. Nice Thanks. job. All right, from Eric's building, we go to one of the more unusual entries we have for the Kit Bash Challenge. And I say it's unusual simply because of the fact that this Kit Bash Challenger chose to submit all of his photographs and things via video. This comes from Charles Sapp, and he did his state line Kit Bash based upon a fertilizer plant that he found near his hometown. He took a bunch of photos of it and then used the state line structure as the main building, bricking up some of the windows in order to make the bays where the fertilizer would be loaded in. He then added some other parts, including a Rick's elevator and some Walther's tanks and a piece of a Walther's shed yet in order to put the whole thing together. Now, he is also going to do some detailing on the interior. He hasn't quite finished that yet, but he's got it started. In taking some photos of the fertilizer plant, he found that the fertilizer material in the plant was largely a white color, and so he used Woodland Scenic Snow to represent the piles of the fertilizer granules inside the plant. He's got one of the bay doors open here as though a skid steer is about to come in and start loading that material together into the mixer to eventually be dumped into a truck and taken out to a farm field somewhere. So Charles, really great job. And incidentally, if you're interested, Charles has his own YouTube channel called Model Rarity for Dummies, and he chronicled the entire structure kit bash project from start to finish on his YouTube channel. So keep making those videos, Charles, and thanks for being part of the challenge. Well, Dana, the depot is done, isn't it? The depot is done. Um, it was a lot of fun to do. Good, looks great. Thank you. And um, it's Freelance Depot, but I was able to use enough of the wall pieces to get a bay window mm -hmm. and then to refigure it to have freight doors here and and basically like this will be a freight loading sort of area on the other side and okay. the track side will be here. Now I know you built the doors on the end or on the, in the I inside, scratch right? built these two doors because the doors I ordered were on back order. Yeah. And then after I spent all the time doing that, the doors came in. Okay, yeah. So these doors I just had to modify by shortening them a bit, mm -hmm. but the others are scratch built. That looks really great. You know, obviously the kit was made to have those rolling over, you know, roll up doors. Yeah. Uh, but just 
it's amazing the difference in the character of the thing just by putting the, the swing open yeah, doors it instead gives it, on it. Yeah, it really gave it more of that steam era yeah. sort of look, yeah. no, which is what horrible. I was going for. Okay, so now I know you had some trouble with the roof. I did because originally, and I had worked really hard to get the geometry of the subroof just right yeah. for the material I yeah. was using. The material I was using was very thin uh, shingle okay. sheet. Okay, yeah. And I stupidly used a contact cement that I'd never used before and didn't read that it wasn't compatible with plastic. So oh, when I put it on the roof, no. it, it did this. Yeah, and look at that. It even, warped it even and crazed. crazed all the And then to pe peeling it off damaged the subroof. And I had to rebuild it. And so the this roof, because I had to end up using styrene standing seam roofing mm -hmm. to mimic steel roofing, it ended up a little higher than I would have liked. Okay. And um, I didn't have enough material, so I had to scratch build some roofing. Mm -hmm. And since the pattern was different, I thought, well, that'll look cool because I can just make it as if it were a replacement panel. Yeah, and as you know, railroad structures, they look the nicest the moment they're built, and from then on, it's whatever the maintenance department has to patch it back together when it needs it. Well, Dana, your station turned out great. It's got that Thank perfect you. railroad feel to it, so I hope you had a good time with it. I did, very much so. All right, somebody else in our Kit Bash competition who is doing a railroad structure is Steve Brown, so let's check in to see how his N-Scale engine house is turning out. Thanks, David. Hey, rail fans, I gotta tell you, I am totally stoked about how this thing turned out, and here's why. This is the original back piece that came with the kit, but if you recall, it used to have this curve in it that matched the roof. Well, I needed to extend this up 10 feet, and I'm gonna do it with this corrugated siding. So I just lopped that off and then spliced on this piece right here. Those are the original window frames that came with the kit. And the original door, that's my new deck that I built that I showed you earlier in an update. And this little wire you see right here, that's powering the LED lighting going off in here right now, which I'm very excited about. As we move it along, oh look, you can see the glare. That's from the windows that I made. I decided not to use the glazing that came with the kit because it was really thick. And this is set up where you can look inside and see everything, and it just didn't look right. So what I did is I took the packaging from a Pico turnout right here. And I took one of the windows and I cut me out some pieces and then just super glued them in. And come the end of the day, you can see there's glazing there and it looks just fine, according to me. In the story of my structure, they blew out the brick and they went in and put in this one piece corrugated front end. And then of course, reinforced the roof with those bars right there, there's the deck again. And you can see the switcher in there and the rails uh, and how that works. Uh, going all the way around to the other side. Now what you can see is on this freight door right here, I filled it in with brick and left the original man door, original windows. Again, uh, extended it up 10 feet and left this roll up door kind of mostly rolled up for access. So again, according to the story of my structure, this thing was once uh, repurposed and repainted and it was pristine in its youth, but it's been completely ignored since then. The inside's all they care about. They don't care about the outside. So now we're looking at the detail I put on the inside. Now, most of these details you're not gonna see from the outside, but if they weren't there, I think you would notice. Let's go ahead and get our, our cute little switcher out of there right now. Just move that gently. And then this piece right here, this is from a Walther's kit for an ice house. And it was actually the platform that they put the ice blocks on and drop them onto the reefers. Well, I didn't use that for anything, but I liked the observation deck part of it. So I went ahead and I put that in, painted it yellow for safety. Anyway, everyone, that is my update on the state line kit bash challenge. I'm very excited about the way it turns out. Hopefully you guys will agree. And David, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this. And, you know, next year, when you do another one of these wacky challenges, I'm on board. So there you go. Now, back to you in the studio. Next up, we've got, well, it could be one of the fan favorites around the building, just for the use of color, if <laughs> well, nothing else. But Well, I know you like it. Well, I like it. Ben times. likes it. Other yeah. people have said the same thing. So, all right, Steve, tell us about your citrus dealer here. Uh, well, like uh, we saw in the original uh, uh, first video launching this, mm -hmm. 
All my good ideas were already taken by other people. I thought nobody's going to be modeling Florida. I know Florida because that's where uh, where I'm from. Yep. So uh, I thought let's uh, you know make this into a uh, citrus packing plant. If you live up north like we do, and you have relatives in Florida, you probably get a box of citrus every Christmas. Uh -huh. So uh, this is the kind of place that would uh, send that out and also uh, sell the fresh juice. Okay. Because uh, you know if you live Hence in the tank. Exactly. Well, you don't keep juice in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like a lot no, of juice. No, but you gotta, but you gotta have a lot of fresh water for the process. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's what uh, that's what the tank is for. Uh, so I got the uh, the tank elements uh, left over from a uh, Walther's kit. Mm -hmm. I scratch built the uh, refrigerator unit. Yeah, um, I remember you working on that when I was in here. Yeah. The uh, basically this is all just you know a strip and siding and uh -huh. uh, stuff like that, and the piping is old sprues. Well, it turned out great. Um, the only thing here is that I got a couple of uh, uh, grills on the top mm -hmm. that are uh, probably diesel details. Well, uh, that's okay. That I got out of one of the scrap boxes somewhere. When you look at it, you expect to see something mm -hmm. up there, and they yeah. fit the bill. Yeah. The uh, part that I uh, that I'm proudest of is the decals. Uh -huh. um, I uh, did those the same way I did the uh, decals for the beer line um, back when I back when I first started. Right. Um, I printed those out using our color laser printer on uh, decal paper. Sprayed them with dull coats so they would be durable. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the coloring is all going to flake off when you handle it. Yeah. And uh, then uh, um, applied it and getting it over all the ridges of the roof was I know. There. I saw that. I'm like, how on <laughs> earth did that you was, do that? Yeah. Basically, I had to start in the middle and then shove everything in from the sides with paint brushes, uh, taking well, it, in the slack as I go. It turned out great. Um, I did make a uh, interior. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I saw everybody else was, so I wouldn't be I able like, to get everyone not doing it. I like the guy who's tripped with the box of oranges. Well, I saw That's that. Awesome. I saw that figure in the uh, in the kit, and I thought, well, well, of course, you know, I've got to use that. But my only regret is that I uh, glued it in here too early. I should have let the CA that I glued the figures down with cure overnight before I glued it in, and it fogged up the windows. Oh, it did, didn't it? Yeah, a little bit. But we'll just say, you know, that it's a hot day in Florida, yep. and the air conditioned inside, and so you've got condensation. Oh, sure. That makes <laughs> perfect sense. <laughs> that, if you live in Florida, most, you know that yes, happens a lot. Yes, most places I've been in Florida, yes. <laughs> I've seen that. Exactly. So, yeah. Steve, it's a nice job, and I like the fact that you, you managed to pull off really well the building that just goes right along the backdrop. You have all sorts of other space to do other scenery in the in the foreground then. So if you had not uh, prohibited a diorama, I would have had a parking lot with cars and people. Well, that's and... okay. You can do that next. <laughs> well, you can do maybe, that next. Maybe. So. All right, Steve, it looks good. Thank you very much. Thanks. Next up, we have another outside kit bash challenger. This comes from Joseph Bodenaire. Now, Joseph modeled a farm supply building using the state line kit bash parts. But he chopped up some of the sidewalls and moved them around, put a little bit of an interior into it, complete with some tractors, and he added some DPM wall sections to make an office off to one side. To round it all out, he painted it up, added the decals from the State Line kit, and voila, you have Joseph's version of the State Line Farm Supply. Good work, Joseph, and thank you for sharing your photos. Well, Cody, the municipal building is done at last. Yes, and the paint's probably still wet, but uh, I think it turned out pretty well. So uh, I'm real happy with this. What I did is I uh, used the sidewalls from the Walther's kit. And mm -hmm. then, as you recall, I used some sheet styrene and then some of the N-Scale Architect brick sheet yep. to do the uh, front and back walls. Matter of fact, your original front wall became the spare wall for my kit. So. Right. Yeah, there's been a lot of part swapping around here. But I, I wanted to go not necessarily for an exact copy here of the prototype, but just highlighting some of the features, mm -hmm. such as the uh, shape of the front wall here. And then some of the details. I've driven past here a few times and the doors are open. It's a block wall yeah, looks like in it. there. So another thing I did here was use the shadow box. So it's just a few inches deep. And then I've got this block wall here, which I made using the N-Scale Architect uh, cinder block sheet here. Threw in a few details of broom, some pallets, a couple of figures. And uh, I think it really does a nice job making it look like there's something going on, even though it's just a couple inches deep. Now, I thought about adding lights in there, but I wasn't uh, overly concerned about that. The one thing I wanted to do, though, was make this little, I think it's a snow fence. Yeah. Uh, that was something that was in the prototype uh, photos that I took, and I really like that. And I, I struggled quite a bit with how to recreate that. Mm -hmm. So I used pipe brackets for that from CalScale. I just laid them in, used some 22 thousandths brass rod, super glued everything in place, and I think it's a really nice detail. It was only on the side here with the employee entrance. So it's kind of a neat detail and adds a little bit of visual interest to the roof. Yeah, otherwise that roof would be really bland. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, it's not easy with the, the angles on here to necessarily put a lot of details. But you know, a couple of vents and 
That little snow shield there does the trick. No, the snow shield adds a lot of interest. One other thing I did too is I sprayed doll coat on the back of the window glazing uh -huh. so you can get some light through there, but you're not seeing the detail because what I did, and I'll real carefully pop this roof off so you can see. So that's all it is, and I have some of those uh, 90 degree corner braces here from City Classics, mm -hmm. and I don't want people to see that they're just braces back there. It looks great, Cody. Nice right. work. Thank you. Well, I'd say our state line kit bash challenge was a resounding success. I'm really amazed over the fact that everybody started out with the exact same kit in either HO scale or N scale, and by the time they were done through creativity and imagination, built buildings that pretty much could be used for just about any use on a model railroad. Thank you to all of you who participated in the state line kit bash challenge or left your comments under these videos. And remember, just because the kit comes with instructions doesn't mean you have to build it that way.